Before we begin, you want to make sure that your router is connected to your DVR with an Ethernet cable like so. If you haven't already, please make sure to watch the UPnP video for remote access setup first. It's important to remember that port forwarding is only necessary if UPnP does not work for you, but it should always be tried first. You can click here to jump to that video now. So here we are on the live view screen of our 960H DVR. The first thing you want to do is right click to open up this row of icons down below and left click on the main menu button on the bottom left. Then we're going to jump down to the network page and here you'll find that the IP address is written. Save this, copy it down somewhere, we're going to be using it very soon. Next, we jump over to the Advanced tab, and here we need the Server port and the HTTP port. These should have been set previously in the UPnP video, which you should watch if you haven't already. Other than that, once you've got these three things written down, we can go ahead and move forward with the port forwarding process on the computer. Once you've written down your router's brand name and model number, all we've got to do is open up a web browser and go to portforward.com. Now we're going to drill down into the port forwarding guide section and it's going to pull up a list of different manufacturers for you to choose from. For this example, we're going to be looking at a Linksys router. Just close out of this advertisement and just go down and find your model number for your router. On this page, make sure you click on the default guide and this is going to pull up exactly what you need to find the steps you need to take to port forward on your router. It will show you the IP address you need to type in to access it. It will even give you your default username and password. And below, you'll find that there are also screenshots to show you what the pages look like on your router so you can see exactly what you need to do. Now I'm going to show you what this process looks like on our router. So here we are on a Windows 7 computer. Once again, this will look much different for you, but the point is to just give you an idea of what it looks like to port forward. Make sure that you use the guide for your router. Go ahead and start by opening up a web browser and punching in the IP address for your router. Go ahead and log in. And for us, we can start by going to the Applications tab to get to the Port Range Forwarding page. We're going to go ahead and begin with the HTTP port, which was 8888. Make sure you enter your DVR's IP address, which ended in 150. Make sure that it's enabled, and the protocol can be TCP or both for HTTP, but in this case we'll leave it on TCP. Next, the Server port, which was 9999. Enter for both the Start and End ports. Enter your DVR's IP address again, and we can also leave this protocol on TCP. Enable and click OK to save. Next, we'll show you what it looks like to confirm that your router is set up properly so that you can access your DVR remotely. So here we are on a Windows computer running Windows 7, and before I can show you what it looks like to pull up your DVR, we're actually going to need to get your public IP address first. And in order to do that, just simply open up any web browser. In this case, I'm going to be using Google Chrome. Just go ahead and search, what is my IP? I'm doing that up here because it's Chrome. Otherwise, just type that into Google's search box. And it will actually return it to you on the search page without you needing to open up any one of these websites. So write this down, save it somewhere, maybe even as a bookmark for your favorite web browser, just so that it's easier to access. Next, I'm going to show you what it's going to look like for you when you're away from home and logging into your DVR remotely. So here we are, one last time on a Windows computer. Make sure that you have your public IP address handy. Go ahead and open up a browser like Google Chrome and start punching in all of the numbers. In my case, it's 50.162.18.140. And this is where you want to add a colon and your HTTP port number, which was 8888. 
it may ask you to install a plugin with a little icon up here. Whatever it is, just click install, run the program, make sure your plugin's installed. You may have to actually end up refreshing the page just for the plugin to pop in and work correctly. And other than that, once you see the interface looking like this, just punch in your password. Change the media port to match the server port, if you recall, was 9999. And change LAN to WAN and click the arrow. Once you see all the cameras come up, that means you're done. Thanks for watching guys, be sure to subscribe to our channel and also check out our other how-to videos for Amcrest Technologies.